Seven o'clock in the morning for me. Out and about here in the Spring Mountains near Grump, Nevada. On that side of the Spring Mountains, that is. So I'm out here uh, escaping the heat. It's kind of what I do, but uh, uh, there's some, you know, changes going on in my uh, camping setup, and I want to go over that with you guys, uh, see if you guys can make any heads or tails out of this. That's the X5 right back there. That's where I camped last night. Uh, and it was about uh, 80 degrees this morning, I guess. 85-ish. But uh, about 100 degrees down in town. It was about uh, 95 up here. 90, excuse me, it was 90 degrees last night. So, one other thing I'm doing, and uh, it's been a hard decision for me to make and I've been bumped a couple times to probably look in this direction and I'm going to do it it's it's the battery isolator for my my solar battery or my deep cycle battery set up in, inside the uh, the uh, eminence front x5 what is the battery isolate battery isolator well there's several types but th the basic idea is it uses the car alternator the vehicle alternator once it has finished its duties charging the car battery after it's started up uh, it, it is then used once that's in, it's then used to um, power up the <coughs> deep cycle batteries does it a lot faster it's about 140 amps coming from my alternator and well it does it in, in a fraction of the time that the solar panels will now the solar panels have been a topic of mine for the past couple of weeks on my uh, YouTube channel and my Facebook page because I've been having some issues with it falling apart because I'm, I'm banging it around a bit. Now, Zamp makes good products, but uh, uh, it needs to be a little more rugged for, for Larry's kind of use. I, I, I pull them in and out of the vehicle every day, and uh, it's going on almost three years now, coming in, in January. <laughs> That's kind of hard to believe, but <laughs> three years coming, and... Uh, it's gotten me to this point, and I'm, I'm very happy with them. I can't really say much bad things about them since, you know, they've basically, you know, high winds have blown them out of camp, and uh, I thought they were destroyed, but no, they were fine. Uh, but they can't really survive Larry over three years' use and uh, everyday use, and I don't blame them. I'm, I'm pretty hard on equipment. Set off on this journey to not use uh, petrol to, to charge up my batteries, and I've successfully done that. However, uh... I'm going to give you guys a, a, a really interesting example and maybe a stark contrast to what you probably are believing with solar generated rechargeable systems. When it gets hot out, these, uh, these panels get really inefficient. We're talking anything above like 80 degrees. So I don't know if you guys are following the news or not, but, uh, or the weather out here in this part of the country. But we're reaching uh, temperatures of up to 112 degrees, 113 degrees out here. And uh, in Death Valley itself, uh, I think we get, got a record of 133 degrees. Uh, the solar panels just do not function very well. Um, what I mean by that is you can have them out in the sun, but they're overheated. They're very inefficient. And uh, the little bit of power it does generate uh, doesn't uh, compensate for how much draw there is from the fridge while it's running. Now, the fridge is running extra long and more cycles during the day because it's hot. Now, whether or not I have the fridge in or out of the car, it's not going to matter. It's the ambient temperature is just well above where, it, where it's, I think, designed to be. So, what do you do? Well, you adjust. Yeah, you look at your options. You look at uh, what you do versus uh, uh, what you're not doing. So what I'm doing a lot is I'm driving quite a bit when I'm on the road. And uh, I, I definitely have ample time to charge up the batteries during that, uh, that, that trip. Now, right now, I have to really kind of, you know, gauge when I'm driving. So I might charge during the day and then uh, actually uh, travel during the night where it's cooler. Um, it, it just works better. Um, I could be charging the batteries at the same time and, and driving any time of the day that I, that I choose. I can't do that right now with this temperature because it, it's very hard to get to 100% unless I am up at altitude, like I am now, uh, out of the heat, which I am now, 
and uh, I set my panels out first light in the morning. So I'm getting uh, really good charge early in the morning versus uh, uh, 10, 11, 12 o'clock in the afternoon where it gets piping hot out here. And well, I'm just stuck in stalemate where I'm, I'm struggling to find 100% charge. And you have to do that once in a while. Now, if it continues to be hot for a really long time, it's no different than uh, having, you know, cloud cover for me. Uh, it's really, really strange. I, and people don't really talk about this on, on YouTube for some reason. I don't know. Uh, but uh, out here in the desert, not really a good idea to use solar, solar power, uh, especially in the summer. Um, it's just something that you have to live with. You have to, you have to adjust to. It's part of the adventure, and uh, it's learning how to, to live around the equipment that you've brought with you. And, and that's exactly what I've done. I have 310 amp hour deep cycle AGM batteries. They don't have any off gassing. They're, they live inside the car, behind the driver's seat and behind the, uh, the passenger seat. And they're strapped down. You don't really get to see those much because they're, well, they're strapped down. They're covered with stuff. Uh, they're covered with, um, on the passenger side, they're covered with my, my dirty clothes hamper. It's a duffel bag that I roll up and it sits right on top of those. Uh, on the other side, there's a fridge and uh, uh, mounting for that. A little shelf. Now, the heat, you can dodge. You know, I'm moving around because of the heat. And during that uh, moving around, I could be charging the batteries. And they charge very efficiently off the battery, uh, excuse me, off the uh, automobile uh, eminence from X5's uh, alternator. Excuse me, can't get that out. So, there you go. Uh, a kind gentleman on my channel, uh, a follower, has elected to uh, step up and uh, purchase this for me. He's actually purchased the exact model that I'm looking for. It's the, uh, it's the uh, Victron uh, uh, battery isolator. And uh, got it off of uh, my wish list, believe it or not. And uh, uh, it, it should be coming soon, I, I, I would hope. Uh, but um, hooking it up shouldn't be a problem. It just hooks up in line with the uh, alternator and battery right now. And uh, basically uh, it interrupts that, that circuit and, and splits it from that point on. But uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. It should be a pretty cool, fast setup and uh, looking forward to it. So uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I might do a how-to video, but I'm terrible at these. I just like to actually get the work done. Um, doing these how-to videos tends to really drag it on, just like anything, uh, even normal uh, hiking videos. You have to stop and do B-roll, and you're doing that for like an hour to two hours at a day. It, it, it takes a lot of time. Uh, and out in this heat, I don't know if I want to be doing that. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of in a tough spot. Even if I went over to, to Fat Thor's, he's uh, another viewer of the channel. Uh, he lives out here in Prump. Even if I went over to his place to work on the car, it, it's still bloody hot. There's just no way around it. But uh, I'll find a way. I'll find a way. It's all doing the work inside the car and I have to unload the whole car. So coming up to elevation in a place like this might be the, the, ideal, uh, the ideal place to do it. I might actually do that. So we'll see. But that's what's going on right now. That's kind of a trip update. Uh, I'm having a great time in this heat, believe it or not. It, 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 you know, wonder hussies out there dodging the heat. I'm out here enduring it and uh, experiencing it. Uh, it's my third year doing this, uh, dodging the heat my way, but still living around it. So, Eminence Front X5 and I would like to say thank you to all the new subscribers that have just come on board, whether that's from the Wonder Hussie channel, uh, fans of theirs are often fans of mine, and uh, there's a good crossover there too. Uh, Sarah and I are uh, good buddies and we like to travel on and you get to see that bleed over into our videos uh, we just travel well together and uh, um, yeah you get to see either us collaborating or me not maybe collaborating with other channels or upcoming channels like adrenaline jackie's channel is an upcoming channel that should be very interesting to watch uh, I, I, I like her short uh, sh her short videos that she throws up they're just they're funny. <laughs> But uh, thank you everyone for coming over and uh, all the new subscribers. Uh, 
please comment below. Join my live chats once in a while. Chime in, say hello. Uh, it's, it's a very welcoming community right now and uh, hopefully it continues to be so into the future. But uh, I enjoyed a lot. I enjoy just like watching other conversations are going on in that chat room. Uh, it, it's fun to watch. It, it's really interesting. Uh, they're, they're an open group and I, I encourage you guys to, to experience it once in a while. Uh, it, it's the live chats are really just meant for the the viewers who want to converse ask questions about the videos I do uh, maybe recommend places I go stuff like that that's you know the general idea of what those live streams are all for and, well join if you can it's this Saturday 730 Pacific and uh, yeah I pop on during the week sometimes just impromptu no notification at all just boom I turn it on and I start chatting with whoever's around those turn into some big ones too. Uh, none of these live chats turn into anything really monetizable. I turn them off immediately. Uh, a lot of times there's lobby music going on, stuff like that. So I, I wouldn't make any money if I even had monetization on them anyway. They would go to someone else. But uh, they're really just for the fans. And I don't really focus on that portion of my channel a lot. Uh, although it has been very popular. I, I think what I would rather do is do day in the life of kind of kind of channel and uh, show you what it's like to be uh, a person like me living on the road uh, trying to do this YouTube thing or, or thinking that I can and <laughs> all the trials and tribulations that I actually have to endure on the road <laughs> and I, that includes trips with you know all the channels that I do and, and whatnot I, I should really start a channel and, and, and document uh, what I kind of do with my free time and I do have a lot of free time, and uh, I appreciate that. And it all goes into creative juices. Uh, it takes some time to come up with some of these ideas and develop them. Uh, Sarah's really good at that, and uh, well, we'll see what happens with my channel on that. But right now, I'm focused on a project that I started this vi video out with, and that's my solar setup. These 100-pound panels. Man. Until next time.